This is Paul Sanneman from Business Success Tips, where you can learn to make more money in less time and have more fun. And I'm excited today. I have an old client of mine, David Thorne of David Thorne Landscape Architect. How are you doing, David? I'm doing great, Paul. Great to see you. So we've known each other for many years. Makes it sort of older old guys, right? What can I say? <laughs> and so how long have you been in business, David? Well, I'm I'm happy to celebrate my 40th year of being in business. Uh, I got wow. licensed in 1983, and we celebrated uh, just uh, this year for 40, 40 years. Of wow, that's amazing. So tell me a little about your landscape architectural business and what makes it so successful. <laughs> um, well, uh, let's see. We, uh, we're a firm. We're established in Oakland, California. And we do custom residential throughout the greater Bay Area. But over the recent years, um, with some of your help, Paul, of expanding our base, we've uh, gone up to the wine country and a lot more into the South Bay Peninsula. And um, Los Angeles, Manhattan Beach, and we're now licensed in Austin, Texas, and have a project there and a couple others of potential. Um, and uh, what makes us successful is um, I think we are just, well, first of all, we are, a, we are a, we're a team of about 12 to 13 people, depending on the time of year and how you count all our different employees. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, part of our success is um, the ability to have changed and grown over the years and, um, you know, foster talents within the group. And um, also, we're just very, um, we're a dynamic group, and um, we, um, we work, uh, everyone is really devoted in, in the work, and we give them as much uh, opportunities to grow and um, to, to, to grow within the firm. And I think that that pays uh, me dividends and our clients in particular because of that. So Dan, tell me what, what kind of landscapes you do, how much they cost, what do they look like? Give our audience an idea of the kind of work you do. Sure. Well, um, like I said, we do custom residential. And I would say that these are sort of dream gardens or dream homes. So the 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 the, the, the gardens that we would probably design are between 500000 to 2 million, maybe more. That's the landscape budget, um, the, the landscape, hardscape, swimming pools, retaining walls, all the exterior, the house. The houses could be anywhere from, you know, two to five million, maybe maybe more. So these are very um, expensive projects that um, have to be successful, and sometimes it's nerve wracking. But I think over the years we've been able to crack that nut. So how do you find somebody that wants to spend two million on a garden? I mean, that's got to be a rarefied air, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. And we do smaller projects. We uh, And before I answer that question, we do smaller projects. We don't want to just be totally like, oh, you know, if you don't have a million dollars, don't come to us. Because right. what we're most interested in, and this is what you helped me with, actually, is to identify clients that really want to work in a, you know, within a design process. And so, you know, they may want to spend $200,000 on, on a construction budget. And if they're willing to pay us, you know, a reasonable fee, then we'll be interested in working with them on that. So we, we're not just exclusively million dollar gardens. Yeah. Um, how do we find that? I think we, we've over the years positioned ourselves to um, know a lot of high-end architects. Uh, interior designers are very important today for any designer or contractor that's working in the industry. I would, I would, I would couple up with a, very top interior designers because there's the ones that's running the shows these days, it seems to me. Um, and we have to have, I think, good word of mouth for people to trust us with, you know, 500, a million dollars. So I think- So most, most of your clients come as referrals from architects? I would say it's three-pronged. Uh, yes, architects, actually maybe four. It would be word of mouth would be number one. Number two would be architects. And number three would be, you know, like I said, the interior designers are forming a lot of the teams these days. Okay. So they're the ones working with the client and reaching out to say, oh, we want to, let's talk to Dave Thorne, let's talk to XYZ, you know, let's talk to these architects. So interior designers are really important. So how do you, do you, 
how do you initiate these relationships with interior designers and architects? Well, um, I mean, I, I guess if we're, if I can harken back actually to some of the stuff that you helped me with, um, is a, uh, establish a strong and devoted marketing plan with really distinct action steps, which is our website, uh, house, which is a relatively recent thing, our social media, uh, excellent photography, and uh, lunch and learn and outreach connections. And so those all the things that I think you helped me develop, but you, we, we sort of had, I think, good uh, aspects of that. But I think you pushed us to a different level. So that's, I think, having strong uh, website presence where you know people can search and see images that are really striking um, uh, 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 tends to attract these interior designers and architects. So people sort of fall in love with your pictures, right? In a way? Yes. Yep. Yep. And then, yeah, I, I would say that that's probably one of the most important things for anyone starting a business these days is to... So, so how do you get the... You saw professional photographers. How do you get those kind of pictures that are the awe uh, kind of pictures? You know, people get amazed. Well, um, we over the years, we've been reaching out to um, very noted photographers within the industry. Um, and so that's, you know, they they know how to develop that. But I think that we do a ton of work you know, to get that, to get three or four images takes a ton of time, but it's totally worth it. So we, we scout the project ahead of time. If there are plants that we need to add, we'll, we'll even pay for them. We coordinate with the maintenance people. We coordinate with the owners so we can go out and shoot that project in the early morning or at night and, and, um, um, you know, have everything working. We don't want to have the sprinklers come on or like crazy so you stuff. You actually have to stage it like a like we a have to really, yes. Yeah. You you can't just go out to get those wow images, Paul. It's a tremendous amount of work. And it's a it's an investment of time and money. But um it's to get that one shot, it, there's a lot of prep, but it's totally worth it. And I think those that have seen our website would probably agree with that. We have some amazing images. So you would advise people in construction or whatever to spend the money to get the pictures to look right. Cause a lot of guys, they go take a picture with their iPhone. They say, I'm good. They don't really are willing to spend the money to get the images to look right. Correct. Yeah. And I see so many, what I would say, um, poor photography on some, even some high end sites where, you know, there's the hose curled up or there's the dead plant in the corner or a stack of, trash or something off to the side and you think oh my god the client that's not gonna that's not gonna get you the million dollar project you you, you every image has got to be curated and so you better spend you're, you're only as strong as your weakest image right so you <laughs> all, they've all got to look good yes they really do right so what do you typically spend on a project to get it photographed um well, recently we just had launched four new shots. The fees, the photography fees were, um, depending on how many images we got, were between $2,500 and $3,500 for the photography fee. And that included um, an assistant. They usually have an assistant that's there. And then we're there too, by the way, Paul. Um, right. And then we usually have our director of operations, Quintana's there, and I usually have another assistant. So if you if you throw in their time, um, and then we usually pay the gardener or we may throw in, you know, um, several hundred dollars or more and staging material, new plants and things like that. So, you know, I would say 2,500 to $5,000 per shoot, mm -hmm. but I think it's totally, it's a lot of money, but it's totally worth it. Cause that, that I have a hard time sometimes convincing contractors or audience that, well, why would I spend five thousand dollars on a picture I can go take with my iPhone? I can't tell the difference. Well, the problem is you may not be able to tell the difference, but the person who's spending that kind of money when as a client can tell the difference, right? Correct, correct. And I think we we get enough responses where they say, "Wow, we love all your images," you know, or they they may say, "Well, you know, we do a very very different varied style, Paul, as you know, different. You know, we do a lot of modern, but we do traditional right. Mediterranean. So there's a lot of images that." 
-hmm. clients might not speak to them for their house, but they appreciate the image and what it does. So, so you would talk. say you have to have varying images for very cl varying clients. So yes, you got a modern image, you got a traditional, you have a Mediterranean. So I'm a, I, I guess I assume when people look at a site, if they don't see the kind of garden or that they want for themselves, they probably won't call you. I, I, yes, yeah, yeah, and and at, and we do varied styles, so and that that can be a pro and a con. But I think for us, it is is a pro because we we you know if if they want to do a modern, they can see modern images and say, "Wow, I want that." Or if it's a traditional classic or a craftsman, they can see a, that type of garden and say, "Oh, wow, that looks great." Uh, we want that. So you would say the sale of your company to the client probably happens in that five seconds on your website where they look at the image and they fall in love with it. And I always have to do diligence and the you know references and all that kind of stuff. But if they don't fall in love with an image, they're probably not going to become a client. Is that fair to say? I think it is very fair to say and that, and especially in the modern world with all the social media and things. In the old days, you would you would go out to a job site with a, a printed portfolio or drawings, and and you'd show it that way. But um, in today's world, you you don't have very much time. They're they're going to love the image and they're going to call you, uh, or or they're not. <laughs> right. So you would say one of the big successes of your business is because you can demonstrate in your website or in your social media the quality of the work you do by the images you portray. Is that fair? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. So I guess the advice to the people listening to this, a lot of contractors and architects and people are not willing to spend the money to get those special pictures. And I think it probably costs them. That's my guess. Because, you know, it's hard to measure lost opportunity costs, right? Like how many went to your website and didn't pick you? <laughs> it's a hard number to figure out. But clearly spending the time and the energy on the images that are going to sell your service are worth it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, that's really good advice for people because I know a lot of people have a hard time spending money on that. So let's say images are really important. Um, what other factors are important, you think, in you landing those big jobs? Um, well, one thing we've been doing, uh, lately is, um, uh, Quintana, my director of operations, we both go to the job. So actually let's, let's roll back this and I'm sorry to uh, have okay. a digression here. So what's for us to get a job like that? is what happens is they see, they go onto our site, they're referred by a friend, they see these images, boom, they call us or send an email. Then we set up a quick Zoom call with them mm -hmm. um, or depending on the location, we'll just, we'll set up an appointment. So then we'll go to the site and meet the client face-to-face, -face, which is really important too, and walk the site to understand the goals, uh, the project, the timing, possible budget, and then I think it's it's really important for me and others to be able to talk to um, how we might achieve that. We're not going to design it right there, but the ability to show that you have the skill set and your team has the skill set to do that project. Like, oh, you're going to build a, a swimming pool on a cliff, you know, on the edge of a cliff. Well, you better have the team to be able to design that and the engineers and you've done it before. So, you know, you, you have to legitimize uh, yourself, your firm to them on site that you can that you can pull the project off and you have the time and, and the interest to do it. And I think and then there's that interpersonal relationship, you know, do, is there a right fit for me? Because we, we want to make sure we're good with them. And do they do they have a good vibe with us? And Quintana, uh, who's my director for observation, she's there, too, and she takes notes and she adds to that. So we, we come out as a team. So I think that's how we, that's our next selling point, if you will. Okay. So it goes through the no like trust thing, right? So the sooner you get through that, the better. But what you're saying is, it isn't something you want to do on the phone. It isn't something you want to do in emails. You want to actually go visit the site and actually create that relationship in real time with that individual, right? 
Absolutely. And I think the thing is, is that I'm, a, I'm an enthusiastic person. I can see I've done this a long time, so I can go out to the site and I can just, you know, talk about opportunities. You know, God, I could see we could locate the pool here and that's going to capture this or let's have the sitting area here because it looks out this way and get them excited about all these things and show that 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 you've got all these fantastic ideas. So, yes, we, we it's that personal relationship. Um, you, you, you have to you have to be able to talk to the clients about that. So I think especially at that level, most people want to feel like you're they're your most important client. Right. Yes. And somehow you're able to communicate that to the client that I've done, you know, 500 swimming pools, but yours is going to be the most amazing. <laughs> whatever. Like that you're the most important client. How would you say you would convey that? Because you obviously do it because you get these big jobs. But how would you as a principal convey to a client that you really care and that you're just not another just job and you're done and it's over? I mean, somehow your passion, your caring, that they're your most important client. How would you how do you convey that to somebody? Well, that's a little harder question. I, I think it comes down to uh, my personality or any personality you 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 first have to want to come out and listen you know they it's easy for someone to go out and me just talk about our firm or opportunities but i think number one is you you want to listen to them you know and really understand their goals for behind the project um we always talk about their family who we design in the garden for you know, do they have children? Do they have grandchildren? You know, what's this for? Uh, we always want to make sure uh, we're at all possible to try to have both members there, whether it's a husband and wife or partners or whatever it may be, to have everybody there as part of the table of the discussion. And, you know, if someone's talking um, and the other one's quiet, it's nice to try to pull that other person out. So, and say, well, what is that? Are you aligned with that? And you know, or what, what are your ideas? So it, it's it's really having them understand that you're up here for a collaboration. Um, I think another thing is to talk about, especially if we're working in teams, is there an architect? Is there a contractor there? Sometimes we get involved in a project uh, where they're, they're already building the house. So we want, we would say, let's have the contractor there so that we can identify things that may help the contractor right now. We haven't even designed right. it yet, but are there in infrastructure? How can we how can we help your contractor stay on budget and um, help you stay on budget? So it's, it's it's bringing all these team members together and, and being willing to talk to all those people and, and and listen to their needs. So that's very good advice, David. I have a question. If anybody listening to this podcast happens to want to call you and get a hold of you, either, and they may not be doing a million dollar garden, they just want some advice, but how would they reach you? Uh, well, they could uh, Google David Thorne and uh, we would probably pop, uh, pop, uh, come up, but uh, they can reach me at david at thornla.com. So T-H-O-R-N-E-L-A for landscape architects. So david at thornla.com. That's my direct email and I would answer anybody's email. Um, okay. And what's your website? Uh, www.thornla.com. Okay. I think if you guys want to see what some really classic images look like, and, you know, well done. I think you should check, visit his website. It, it, they're amazing. So, David, thank you for being here. I appreciate your good advice, and uh, I appreciate you being on the show. You're you're very welcome, Paul. Good luck to you.